session we are going to discuss about convergence in fea we need to understand what is the importance of mesh refinement which leads to convergence in fea definition of convergence in fea convergence in fea refers to the process by which the numerical solution approaches a stable and accurate result as the mesh or other discretization parameters are refined for example you initially start with a step bar and you give a meshing which is coarse type what is coarse meshing this is something what is coarse mesh wherein you have the size of the mesh as quite large you can see that there are only 40 elements here when you go for a normal type of mesh a little increase in number of elements that is 112 you see the mesh size has reduced next is fine mesh where there are 448 elements you can see that the size of mesh has reduced further and the number of elements that you can see the rectangles as you can see have increased and when you come to the very fine mesh wherein there are 1792 elements you can see that the number of elements have increased drastically so when you increase the number of meshes what you do is you converge towards the solution importance in achieving accurate results the goal of convergence is to obtain a solution that is independent of the mesh size or other numerical parameters indicating that the solution has reached a sufficiently accurate and reliable state so there is a very important part of fea which includes coming to a solution which is closer to the exact solution for example you are analyzing the same step bar one side is fixed and on the other side you have some load being applied of tensile type when you use the saw method of calculating the change in length or the stress over the body you can use the formula of delta l is pl upon ea which can also be written as delta l is sigma l upon e so assuming that you use the method of saw and you get the value of stress as some 58 newton per mm square when you use fea you will not get 58 because it is an approximate method in itself so you will get some answer say it is 57.2 or 57.4 it is 57.6 something of that sort so if you want to converge towards 58 you need to have some changes in the parameters such that you get an answer closer to 58 so we are trying to figure out what are the various ways of doing that the first thing that you can do is by changing the mesh or making the mesh more finer convergence is often achieved through mesh refinement as the mesh is made finer that is more elements are used the solution should converge to a stable result so you will go more closer to 58 this process is iterative as the analyst typically refines the mesh until the solution no longer changes significantly so it is possible that by using fea you would come down to a solution of say 57.4 maximum you cannot go any further until and unless you don't reach 57.4 you will have to continuously keep on increasing the number of meshes until the solution doesn't change any further so this is very important meshing next we'll talk about the convergence criteria engineers and analysts use convergence criteria to define when the solution has reached an acceptable level normal convergence criteria include monitoring changes in key output quantities such as displacements stresses or energies between successive iterations so that's what i'm trying to explain that suppose if the value is 58 so when do you say that you have converged it is possible that 57.4 is the maximum value that you will get which is converged towards the exact solution so this is an example of stress that i have shown you you can have other quantities which you can use for understanding whether the solution of the problem has converged or not for example displacement or you have some strain energy or you could have some other parameters which would define the convergence of the system when these changes become small the solution is considered converged adaptive mesh refinement some fpa software tools offer adaptive mesh refinement capabilities 
In adaptive refinement, the mesh is refined selectively in regions where high gradients or critical phenomena are expected. This can lead to more efficient simulations by focusing computational resources where they are most needed. So let's take the same example. Assuming that this is a element that we are trying to analyze. Say this left end is fixed and on this side there is some tensile force exerted. If you understand by the concepts of design, whenever you have a hole, you have that area of maximum stress over there. So if I understand the meshing over here, you would see that the meshing is more at this area. The reason is the stress is more there. So you need to create more elements to get better solution. There is an option of meshing which is called as inflation wherein you can actually increase the number of layers or elements as you say at the point where the stress is more. So you can use that option and increase the number of meshes purposely so that you are able to get better solution in that zone. So I have another example here. You can see that this is the original mesh and this is the same hole. Here the stress is more. So what you can do is you can increase the number of elements, further increase the number of elements and increase it more. So what happens is you basically use the same concept which is used in cameras these days. Initially if you look at the cameras, the number of pixels defining a picture were few. For example, you can consider your own face. If you see your face in a camera which was used say 10 years back, it was very difficult to figure out the features of your face. It's not considering the changes that you have gone through. It's about the features in general. See the color of your eye, which has not changed. If you try to zoom and figure out what is the color, you would see that the image doesn't show that clarity. But now what has happened is the same eyeball of yours is now defined with more number of elements so that you can zoom in and you can actually get into the retina level of your eye. So what is happening is zooming getting inside and figuring out what is the feature. You can use that as an analogy here that this is actually zooming in into the area where the stress is more and it is trying to give you better solutions. It is allocating more weightage or importance to those zones which are undergoing more stresses or deformation or energy changes accordingly. Next, we'll talk about convergence plot. A convergence plot is graphical representation of the convergence process. It typically shows the variation of a chosen output parameter such as the displacement, norm, or stress against the number of iterations or the mesh size. A plateau in the plot indicates convergence. So when I look at this diagram which I have here, you can see that this is showing convergence, which is moving towards the exact value. You can figure out these kind of graphs when you use CFD also. Suppose if you want to converge the value of the coefficient of lift. So in those cases, we always try to figure out the convergence plot. We want to know that how many iterations are required to be run for that solution such that I am coming closest to the exact solution. So there you generally find convergence plot. And this plateau or the slope, as you can see, is showing that it is moving at a particular speed towards its exact solution. Next, we'll talk about sensitivity analysis. Understanding the sensitivity of the solution to changes in mesh density or other parameters is essential. Performing sensitivity analysis helps ensure that the results are robust and reliable and it provides insights into the critical factors affecting the solution. So you need to know that what are the factors that is leading to your solution not reaching towards convergence and what is leading towards convergence. So what kind of mesh density or any changes in other parameters would help you to get the solution converged towards its exact value. Convergence for non-linear problems. In non-linear FEA, convergence becomes more challenging due to the iterative nature of solving non-linear equations. Non-linearities can arise from material behavior, large deformations, contact, etc. Specialized algorithms such as neutral raphson are often employed to handle non-linear convergence. So there are various methods which can be used 
but neutral napsin is one of the most commonly used techniques for non-linear FED. Time dependent problems. In dynamic analysis, convergence is not only really related to spatial discretization but also to the time stepping scheme. Convergence criteria may involve the time step size and the stability of the time integration method. So you need to understand that spatial discretization, which means when you are just trying to mesh along a particular axis, it is not going to help. Sometimes you need to also give a proper time step value. For example, it will start from 0 to 0 0.001, then 0 0.002. So you have a step difference of 0 0.001 such that you are going into the lower values of time and trying to figure out where the error is. Sometimes if you have a larger set, for example, 0 0.1 is a difference. That is, you start from 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It is possible that you will never figure out the error because the error was actually at a level of 0 0.001. So you need to give lower step values such that you are able to capture the error. It is possible that the software may ignore and give you a solution, but if you want better solutions, converged solutions, it is advisable to always go for lower step time. Your software may get hanged for a duration, it will take longer duration to give you results, but definitely it will give you better results as compared to a situation where you would have taken a large step value. So let's talk about the key points. Ensuring convergence is crucial for obtaining accurate and reliable results in FEA. Analysts needs to carefully monitor and validate convergence to have confidence in the numerical solutions provided by the simulation. So as an analyst that you are, who is trying to use the software, you need to know how the convergence is taking place, what are the factors which could have given you better converged solutions, and what is preventing you from getting that solution. So with this, I end the session on convergence in FEA. I hope you understood this lecture. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.